Audio Jungle. Good afternoon. My name is Dennis A. Villanueva and these are Sir Eric Razun and Sir Roger Pihada. We are from the Group 5. We are here this afternoon to present to you about the external factors affecting our education. Our objective is not to try and persuade you to take a stand on this issue, but we would like to try and present both sides of the issue to you in order to better educate us on a very important educational concern. We want to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing us to come before the Class 30 for this educational forum. Our topic are socio-economic factor affecting educational performance of a learner. Lacking of learning facilitators at home. Teachers training on different modalities. Socio-economic factors such as family income, parents' level of education, and malnutrition. All influence the quality and availability of education as well as the ability of education to improve life circumstances. Family income, or we call it poverty, directly affects academic achievement due to the lack of resources available for student success. Low achievement is closely correlated with lack of resources, and numerous studies have documented the correlation between low socioeconomic status and low achievement of pupils. And for example, in our school located at Barangay RSB La Carlota City, are surrounded by a sugarcane plantation and many parents are working in the plantation even their children or our school learners why they need to survive with their daily needs some parents working as pickup driver extra laborers Tricycle drivers, laundromat, helper, vendors, and a steel agent or we call them as corridor. The precious time of the parents to follow up the reading skills of their children is not their priority. Instead, spending more time to look for their daily needs just like Foods, payment to their bills, debts, and other expenses. Poor reading comprehension or poor performance in the school as the result of this kind of scenario. Pandemic hits the whole world. Addition to these burdens added to the shoulder of our pupils due to lacking of learning facilitators at home. The effect of this problem turns into poor performance of the learners because instead of studying, they were free to play and do other tasks at home. Parents serve as their learning facilitator at home during the pandemic. But the reality, they will secure first their stomach before their brains of their children. Poverty is really a big factor that affects the performance of the learners in school. Parents' level of education. The higher the degree the parents have obtained, the greater the support the student 
will have for their parents to complete a similar academic goal. Parents who have not attended college, on the other hand, tend to have less direct knowledge of the economic and social benefits of education. Indeed, some of the parents here in our barangay, they didn't finish even elementary grades. As a result, they do not know how to read and some of them having difficulties in writing. Question, how to teach their children at home if they cannot afford to read and write? That is a very challenging part to the parents as learning facilitator at home. Do you agree? Yes. The never-ending factor of malnutrition also deepens poverty due to increased health care cost. Our school accept that hungry and undernourished learners were not able to take on physical work and sporting activities seriously, are less able to attend school, and if they do, are less able to concentrate and learn. School age is a period of physical growth as well as of mental development of the child. Serious and long-term consequences has been observed in early childhood. Malnutrition because it impedes motor, sensory, cognitive, social, and emotional development. Impeding motor skills where difficulties are manifested as capsules. Example, dropping or bumping into objects, as well as slowness and inaccuracy of performance of their motor skills. Example, catching an object, using scissors or cutlery, handwriting, riding a bike, or participating in different kinds of sports. The percentage of our learners shows that undernourished children has an impact affecting their performance in the inside their respective classrooms. Decreased vision and or hearing equity interferes with reception of the spoken message and hints learners with sensory loss frequently experience communication breakdown. Many personal situational and environmental triggers are also responsible for communication breakdown and adversely affects a child's educational performance. In all subject areas, the primary key to understanding lesson is not, is not, but reading literacy. For a child to grow in knowledge and skills and become successful in life, he or she must have the basic ability of reading. Several pieces of research found out that children who learn to read at an early age have greater potentials to academic success compared to their counterparts. That is according to Ataiba and Fox. Positive that reading skill re learned early and quickly is considered as superior and will likely result to academic excellence. On the other hand, Haber and Windmiller reiterated that poor reading skills lead to a lower overall academic achievement and first grade seems to be a critical development period to a child. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, which started two years ago, it created gaps between the teachers and the students and also to their teaching learning processes. Though self-learning modules or we call it SLMs has been adopted as an alternative means to cater to the needs of learners. Some areas of learning needs are not met by such modality. One of which is the need for intervention of our struggler or struggling readers. As a whole, poverty is a problem that more and more children in our school are facing. The price that the children of poverty must pay is incredibly high. 
every year an increasing number of children are entering schools with needs and circumstances such as poverty that our schools are not prepared to deal with it. The term at risk refers to children who are prone to failure in school or life due to social circumstances in their life. It does not appear that just any factor places a child at risk. On the contrary, when more than one factor is present, there is a composition effect and the probability of failure increases significantly in our school. Being able to identify and understand the children who are at risk is essential if we are to support their growth and development. To do this, warm and caring relationships to do be. To do this, warm and caring relationships need to be developed between teachers and the children. This will allow teachers to detect any red flags that may put children at risk for failure, interfering with their chances of success in school and to their lives. Thank you and good afternoon. Greetings. I am Roger B. Tejada from Capas National High School, SDO, Tarlac Province. And I'm here to talk about availability of learning facilitators at home. Ever since the COVID-19 surfaced and eventually turned into a pandemic, teachers as well as students found it necessary to adopt a more hands-off method of teaching and as well as learning, which is poetic considering our jobs require a direct hand in the lives of our students. In the envisioned distance learning approach, parents would have an active role. So the teachers would give the modular lessons to the students to take at home, and ideally, the parents would help them learn uh, whatever it is that the modules would have or is written down. However, one of the biggest challenges that the learners face is that some of their parents are no read, no write. Uh, the main purpose of why the parents are sending their children to school in the first place is that they don't want their children to become no read, no write themselves. So the question would be, who would teach the students now at home? So this kind of modular learning is difficult since not all parents are capable of guiding their children or teaching their children in the first place. Fortunately, the Department of Education has a solution for this. It's called Cluster Learning Facilitator. According to a DepEd order dated July 21, for learners without available learning facilitators at home, subject teachers or a cluster learning facilitator may conduct home visits following social distancing protocols. The assigned learning facilitators may also communicate to students through text messages phone calls, and other available forms of communication. The DepEd said the following teachers are exempted from home visitation, i.e. the following, so 60 years old and above, those with immunodeficiencies, those with existing illnesses or other health risks, pregnant teachers, and teachers who reside in high-risk areas. In which case, school officials like school heads public school district supervisors, education program supervisors, and responsible community stakeholders may be assigned to attend to the organized clusters of learners, particularly in cases where assistance of a learning facilitator is much needed by the learners. Furthermore, the Department of Education would also like to empower parents, of course, for a better home learning experience with their own children so they have shared four significant roles that parents play in the education of their children. That would be FACE, F-A-C-E, and the meaning of each letter would be the following. So F for facilitator of learning, A for assessor of child self-directed learning, C for community mobilizer of learning, and for last, E, enabler of love for learning. 
On the other hand, noted that parents as co-collaborators of distance learning have the responsibilities to inspire and motivate children to love learning, provide spaces conducive to learning, and touch base with the teachers by providing feedback about their children's learning status. Thank you for listening again. I am Roger B. Tejada from Capas National High School. Good day, everyone. I am Sir Erickson Girazon, Master Teacher 1 of Mallorca Elementary School, STO San Leonardo Annex, Division of Nueva Ecija. Today, I'm going to share with you one of the external factors that affects our schools. The abrupt shift to blended learning directly challenged the knowledge, mindset, and skills of our teacher workforce. Formerly, nice to have skills in digital integration became must-haves. Traditional classroom management and instructional design methods no longer applied and everyone was required to embrace a high level of comfort with ambiguity as guidelines and expectations. Teachers' training on different learning modalities is one of the external factors that really affects the schools. It is a great challenge to all teachers to embrace the different learning modalities using the technology as a platform in delivering the lessons. Some teachers could not use technology in the teaching learning process because they are located in a far-flung areas that do not have internet connectivity. Students do not have gadgets to be used in asynchronous learning. With adapted initiatives, technical supports were given through trainings and workshops in order to adapt to the new mode of teaching. These circumstances that arise can be a challenge but an opportunity to abreast to the new trends in teaching.